Hey guys, how you doing? So this is a little bit of a different video that I <clears throat> normally do. Excuse me, my, my throat is terrible today. So we're going to be talking about one laser that we actually host a demo. So we have one of the main heads of the team working with us for a couple days on our store. And we, we found a couple of things that are, I'm not going to uh, sugarcoat it, but they were actually pretty amazing. Uh, that I'm surprised and I'm pretty happy with what they are doing because we all are sort of tired of all these companies coming with different lasers but they are not really nothing new it's just more of the same with a different kind of like a configuration this company have a couple of features a couple of things that are quite amazing uh, that I'm pretty excited about and I did some tests uh, with a machine and this machine was a pre-production machine. So there was like a prototype machine. And the company name is Alien Cell. So I met uh, Rizo and Echo in New York on the Lightburn experience uh, this year in 2025. And I was looking to the machine and the machine was, you know, it's a pretty machine overall, it looks nice but pretty is not gonna cut it anymore now we need to start talking about what this machine can offer and and the reason being is because we we want to buy a desktop laser that is going to give us that extra step into probably finally start our side business you know you you work your nine to five and you want to get home and you have something reliable that you can make product for real. So there's many lasers over the years that are reliable like that, but the improvements are not being very, very, very much until this year that a lot is changing, and this company is bringing something that no one else is bringing. So we're gonna talk about that. So uh, here you see on the screen, uh, the name of the company is Alien Cell, that's the page that they have for the Kickstarter, so I'll, I'll put everything in the description for you so you can go and check them out. So the world's first real-time rendering laser engraver. What that means, they have, how can I explain this right? So I'm all about settings. I kind of narrow down my settings and I kind of, uh, over time, you kind of already know some settings to work with some materials. And you know, you, you run your power speed tests and multiple other things, but this laser has something unique. For example, it will have your material on the library and some are preloaded, so we'll be with this. And based on the type of material and everything that is, it has a slider bar that shows you the material and it will show you how your engraving is going to come out of the laser. So, I'm not gonna lie. When they told me that the first time, I was like, <laughs> right. But he actually works. So we did a test. Uh, he engraved a piece, a graphic, a whole graphic, with the slider, moving the slider, just to get the amount of darkness and light colors and on a leatherette. So you have like a two dual color leatherette, and you have a different levels. You use the power. I was super like, yeah, that ain't working. But they really make me eat my words because it didn't only work. It actually was so accurate that after I ran my speed test and I found, and my dog is just sitting right next to me, and, and, and I found what are the settings that I want to use on the image. They already done with the image. They already engraved the image and they were just ready to use it. I was still finding my settings. So that takes, number one, the waste of the materials probably away. Uh, I wanna say, I don't know if completely away or you you can do one or two tests only like in a small part. I don't know, I need to test more of that future. But it really works. It's, it was just amazing. The results were super good. Um, so, on the, on the Kickstarter, they have different pack, packages like every other company, but they have started everything on 20 watt. So, 
what you can expect on this machine, what this machine is for, or who is this machine for. So Alien Cell itself as a machine, it has some different innovation and some different things. Uh, number one, they are working on something that I'm very happy they decide to do it in that way. They're working to bring their functionality into Lightburn. So they're working with Lightburn team very closely, and that's great because you want not just a new company, but all the companies to work with the software that you already pay for. They also have a suite that it, they will have like enhanced functionality. And I want to say that live rendering or the real time rendering will be in their software suite that is called Alien Cell Space. Uh, and I don't know if they're going to keep that name, but so far it's that. Now they do have a camera, but they, they took a completely different approach in the camera. So the manufacturer, promedio, uh, the, the manufacturer probably tried to make, in every other laser, one camera to cover the most area of your bed. But with distortion and everything, usually cameras are not very accurate. So they, they decided to do two cameras and split kind of in half to get the best possible uh, non-distort and auto-correction image. And what that brings to us as laser users is a uh, very accurate with a minimum of 0 0.5, I believe it was, or less than that, uh, accuracy on a gantry laser camera, you know, which is great because you want to use the most of your material and sometimes framing and aligning things is not the easiest. So they have a dual 8 megapixels camera, uh, which is great. Now, Another thing that I really, really like in this machine that I'm looking forward is for the so very welcome space. It's a 24 by 18. That means that you can buy 16 by 24. You can, you can do so much. You can do a, a whole door hanger, a 16, 15 inches with plenty of room which is great because that's one of the things that people always complain. It's like dial laser are too small. And if you want to do something else, you need to end up buying a big CO2 laser. And at that point, you, you are over $5,000 spent. Dial lasers are as capable of CO2 and many things. Uh, if you have a good air pump and a good power, you can cut plywood in the quarter inch with no problem. You can engrave, and actually, I prefer the engraving on wood from a diode because it has a richer color. It's a hot, it's a hotter beam. Uh, my bamboo engraving is hundreds of times better on a diode than a CO2. So I want to say tomato, tomato depends on what you like, but I I feel like people is discouraging other people to buy diode lasers because they make the commission of the big CO2. But in reality, you're going to spend $1,200, $1,500, $2,000 if you want on a really nice diode and have an amazing engraving. If your thing is cutting boards, you don't cut on wood and you just engrave. I'm going to say that regardless using clear acrylic on the CO2s, if you are mainly wood, get a diode. And this one is blowing the competition away with the functionality. For the preview, for me, that, that was mind-blowing. So they have a 24 by 18 area, which is very welcome because, again, you need that extra space all the time. It's going to have a racer bed. they are going to have a conveyor and all that kind of stuff. They have right now configuration for 20, 40, and 60 watt, which is amazing. Um, I think diode lasers are too hot to be running in 100 watts. Water cool or no water cool, I personally feel like that's just a hazard. It's, it's a fire waiting to happen. Um, so it has a touch panel on the machine itself, which is not just a touch panel to select your previous job and send it again. You can run the whole thing with no computer. The panel, the way it's working, not just allows you to select the file, but it also allows you to select the power, the speed, and everything else in between. So you can configure how this is going to come out directly from the screen. You don't need a computer to run it. So 
if you send a job, it's on the, on the memory of the laser or whatnot, and you can just grab that computer and go do something else. That's great. I, I, I really welcome that future, honestly. Then uh, one of the things is the acceleration. Uh, so they're using a new system with the steppers and the servo motors, uh, and they're using a 20,000 millimeters per square uh, per second square. So that means that the movement, and, and this is where you don't need to let companies trick you. 20,000 millimeters per second square is not the same thing that your engraving speed. So your engraving speed is going to be 600, 800. But when it goes from point A to point B, that there is no engraving in between, it can move up to 20,000 uh, millimeter square second. So, oh, millimeter square second, sorry. Uh, so that's just how fast it will move. I'm gonna say 2,000 millimeters acceleration left, right, or, or whatnot, even more. Um, Another of the functions that I really enjoy in this laser was we all struggle with alignment. Alignment is something that we all struggle, especially with putting star, stuff square with our uh, lasers in frame. So this one has something really cool. Uh, it has a crosshair to see where everything is. But when you move with your hand, with the software or with the touch screen, uh, where you want to add word, the head goes and automatically put themselves in that position, allowing you to put your materials always in the right place, which is very welcome as well. I, I really like that function. Uh, it, it will put me out of business in some gigs, but hey, that's technology, right? So they, they skip one thing that I mentioned that is super important in my opinion is the safety features. They didn't skip those on the machine. They didn't advertise it as loud as I would like to. So they have like 10 camera sensors or fire detection sensors around the laser. So it's fire safe. They have a fire extinguishing system that is also very welcome and is being more popular lately with lasers. So they do have that as well in the machine. Uh, the machine also has something that no other equipment has. And that's it, quality of air sensor so it will tell you around your machine not for inside for outside what is the quality of your air so you know that your air purifier your air filters are working that is awesome i i literally have one of those little things that i put on my room to see the quality of air when i'm running my lasers this one comes with a screen to tell you the quality of air that is amazing and on the back, we all sell, I sell adapters all the time for people that buy a laser, they remove the fan and they need an adapter to be able to still hook up some stuff and, and, and whatnot. They create the turbo fans. Uh, many other brands are using something similar. Uh, so it's like the fan that goes on the spiral, like a turbo engine fan instead of a regular fan. But they create the box. And if you are going to use a filtration system, you don't need to take apart a fan from the machine. You take the back of the box where you hook the, the basically the, uh, the hose that can be left or right in this case. You take that out, take a couple of screws and take a whole assembly and put it back together. It's now hollow, so the air can just flow directly to your air purifier. It doesn't need to go out. So that, that's, a, in my opinion, a very well thought design. Um, the machine can be raised, you can remove the tray, it has a tray to put the slats or put a honeycomb and different other things. Uh, it has a vibration compensation system, it has the, well they call it pixel perfect, so to have whatever is too pixelated, it has like a correction to make it smoother. Uh, and also, on the vibration and everything, they have like a self-testing. When the machine starts, automatically self-test the system to make sure that everything is fine and it's working. So I'm looking here, my, you're looking me down, it's because I'm, I'm just confirming my notes on my uh, phone. But it, it, it really does has a, a very, very interesting features. Uh, for example, one of the things that I noticed, it, and we talked with Raiso about it, is how normally you waste time when you are working with 
uh, the laser going from left to right, because let's say you're making the frame of a picture, not a picture, but just around the frame, like a design. And the laser go on the top, and then it's a little bar in each side, but it goes to a size left to right. And that is a lot of traveling, wasting time on the engraving. This one analyzed that and let you go to on the top, and when it goes to the little bar, goes on that little bar, finish the bottom and goes on the other little bar. So it, it kind of a, a smart way to minimize the timing. So I'm gonna be looking more into this machine. I'm very excited to see this machine coming to the market price wise. Uh, I think that the minimum price, let me pull up here the tab. So I have here the early bird on, this is a kick started with a 20 watt dial laser, a super early bird. Uh, so this one comes to $1,300 at $1,299. Uh, on that 20 watt, then this one comes to 1800 on the 40 watt. That's what the one I, I will get most likely because it's like the best of both, like detail in cutting. Oh, cutting! We cut a bunch of different things during the event that we have for my store, and one of the things that I was blown away the air pump. So, every dial laser sends a fish tank pump, and yeah, blow air. But it's not a really air assist. It's just to huh, prevent. But you need to clean it every you, every time you cut something because you don't have a strong air cleaning for you while you're cutting. This one is 14.1 psi or one bar or something like that. But every cut that we have on three millimeters plywood, birch plywood, it was clean like nothing. I can grab the edge and slide it on my arm and there is no suit whatsoever. So that was very welcome because I'm tired of cleaning the, all the edges all the time. That's a lot of waste of time. Uh, going back to the prices, a 60 watt is $2,400 uh, right now. Uh, and then they have different packages. If you want to, the RSC, the bundle, this and that, all kind of stuff. So I'm going to put all the descriptions, all the links for you down there. Um, I, I encourage you to go read, join the group. I'll put a link for the Facebook group and ask all the questions. Everything that I've been asking so far, I've been answered pretty quick. But I'm looking forward for this machine. I mean, it's a refreshing experience for me with diode lasers. And I've been using more fiber UVs and in, in mobile laces lately. But this has been a really refreshing experience that I encourage anyone that wants to get into the laser and anyone that wants to probably grow their business, uh, go with this. Again, dial lasers are not what everyone thinks they are. They are just as powerful as a CO2 laser using the laser in the right way. So just let's be smart. And speaking of smart, they have an option in their app that if you have multiple machines, you can link them. So you can put the materials in all of them and you can send the job to all of them. So you basically have like a laser farm. <laughs> That's pretty badass. So Alien Cell, I hope you are watching this video and you see everything uh, from the perspective of the consumer. This is what I expect you guys to do be upfront with the customer. If you see something that is not going to work for whatever reason, don't try to sell the customer a machine just because you want to sell it. Tell them this not, is not going to work. You need something else. But so far, all your solutions, I'm personally impressed. I like them. I want to see more. So thank you guys for watching and go check these guys up. You have a questions leave in the comments below i'll try to answer all the time every, every question so thank you guys give us a thumbs up subscribe and fire the laser